It is such a blessing to come and be in fellowship with you one more time. Amen. And we're excited about what God has done. And you know, the more you read about God's word, the more you study God's word, the more you begin to understand that God is excited about what's happening in your life. The middle one is just shot. And uh, if you need to check out the middle one of the screen, hallelujah. We thank God for his peace. We thank God for his love. We thank God for a fresh anointing, for it is the anointing that destroys every yoke. And with the news that we've been hearing, uh, with the challenges that we've been facing, you know, uh, all of the uh, pain and sorrow and hurt, all of the things that uh, we struggle so much uh, in this lifetime, praise be to God, it is important that you understand that in this lifetime, God has given us a remedy. Uh, we know that uh, things are major challenges right now. We know that people are dying. We know that people are sick. We know that there is trouble on every side. However, because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, God has given us a remedy now in this life, in this life of sorrow, in this life of pain, in this life of hurt. The Bible says, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. So I want to address those people who are sick and afflicted and who's lost loved ones, financially challenged. It's just one thing after another. The husband's acting up. Family is falling apart. It just seems like there's no end to the tragedies and the challenges that we face. However, if you will go to the word of God and begin to stand on God's promises, one of the things you understand that we're in a fight and this fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness and high places, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness and high places. And the Bible tells us that we have something that we can do about it. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And when we begin to recognize that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was so powerful that even the most challenging things that's happening right now, God is able to give you peace in the midst of the storm. I know, I know you want to get out. I know the bills are due. I, I, over in Texas right now, people are hurting and a way that they've never experienced before. No food, no hot water, no heat. Praise be to God to have uh, one of the archbishops is over in uh, Houston. Praise be to God. We've been lifting them up and praying for him and, and just trusting and believing God for Texas. But all around the globe, even New York, New Jersey, when you start talking about measuring What's the worst thing? What's the most challenging thing? What's the tough thing? Praise be to God. You lose right away because sin is sin. And with sin, there's darkness. But Jesus Christ said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. A lot of the things that's happening in this atmosphere, not just talking about in your life, I'm talking about with the weather and with the virus and the sickness is because of Adam and Eve committing high treason. And they died spiritually and there was a separation between God and man. But Jesus came, shed his precious blood on Calvary that we might live in victory. When? In the sweet by and by? No, even here, even now, in the mighty name. We could say, well, Bishop, 
You have no idea what's happening in my life. No, I don't. And I could not understand not one minute, hallelujah, how to uh, bring peace to you in my own strength. But I've learned to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Learn how to put on that armor. And then I understand that now, because of the blood, we have hope in Christ Jesus. It's a living hope. It's a lively hope. It's a hope that fadeth not away. It's a hope reserved in heaven. And the challenges become very much a struggle when we really understand that the worst thing that has ever or could ever happen to us in this earthly realm is something that's about to take place soon that we need to avoid, and that's going to hell. It's God's will that none should perish, but none, the, but the righteous shall see God. And how do you uh, operate in righteousness? Hallelujah, because Jesus, because of the pre precious blood of Jesus, we are in right standing. He who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the what? Righteousness of God, where? In Christ Jesus. But let's read, because I was talking last week about uh, Lazarus and the rich man. And, and I, I want to go back because I asked you to go back and read, read. I asked you to go back and study because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. I don't care what kind of orator that comes your way, how great an individual can preach, teach, can or cannot. It's your responsibility to go back because God wants to speak to you. God is trying to tell you something through the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, it's no way we touch with all the Greek and the Hebrew and all the languages that we study can uh, get this word, hallelujah, into our hearts unless the Holy Spirit is leading us, guiding us into all truth. The Father, the Son, God, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit abiding within us. So we pray that as we uh, turn things down and turn things off with sound and you know, it's a lot of sound uh, taking place in your life. And I, 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 I mean that figuratively, uh, sounds of confusion, sounds of doubt. Down in the basement of your life, you turn off, you know, the things that's happening in your mind. You, you, got, you have to turn off some things and then you, have to, then you have to turn on some things. You can't turn on what you don't have. The light that needs to come on is the light of Christ shining in you. So you need to read because we talked about hell and, and people were saying, oh, that's just so terrible. Let's read uh, Luke chapter uh, 16. Father God, we just thank you for Luke chapter 16, the word of God. We just pray that as we read your word, Father God, and study and meditate on you said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night and observe to do all according that is written there. And you said, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have Good success. Lord, we are successful people today. No matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, we thank you in advance for what you already done in Jesus' name. So people are struggling and people are having a tough time. Hallelujah. But Jesus wants you to look to him. Trust him. You say, well, Bishop, I just lost love. I've lost some loved ones. I just had a phone call yesterday about another family member who has the virus, you know, and uh, burying people and uh, fights and arguments and things are just just going on, praise be to God, that you would say, where's God? He's in the mix. Hallelujah. God sees everything. He knows everything. He's aware of everything that's happen, happening, and he wants you to know that he's still in control. Praise be to God. Don't you think for a minute that Satan has authority over you if you are in Christ Jesus. Let's read. Let's just go to chapter 16. We, 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 we don't have a lot of time. And you know, every time I come on, I, 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 I pray and plead with you to go back and study and read because the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the, the Trinity, praise be to God, has left us a legacy, a spiritual legacy that cannot be thwarted. So you need to go back and read. Let's read. It says, and he said in Luke 16, unto his disciples, Jesus said, there was a rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. My God, 
wasted his goods. Think about it. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. We're going to have to give an account for our stewardship as believers, not just pastors, but the Bible tells us as believers we ought to go into all the world and preach the gospel to whom much is given, much is required. What, do you, what, is he, what has he given us? He's given us his word. What has he given us? He's given us the blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and more importantly, he's given us the resurrection from the dead. And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, he's given us peace. Hallelujah. Because of his resurrection, he's given us health. By his stripes, we were healed. Because of his resurrection, he promised to never leave us. For you who are feeling alone and feeling like everybody's there, he promised never to leave you alone. No, never. Ne that word never means never. He whatever you're dealing with right now, Jesus sees. He's, he's present. He, he, he knows. Praise be to God. Because of what Jesus Christ has done, he's given us. So we talk about in the sweet by and by and after a while. No, I'm talking about what Jesus has done for us now, today, with the virus, with the sickness, with the racism, with the hatred, with the crime in our neighborhoods and community, with the churches are closed down and the virus, all these things. We, we tend to look into ourselves and try to figure out what's going on when, when, when Jesus has already put in place victory. Even now, he's Jehovah Nissi. He's our because of the blood, blood of Jesus. He, he's our banner of victory. We 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 go through the world with the banner of victory, with the spoils of war, the spoils of victory that Jesus has given us. He says to the steward, he says, "No longer, steward, hallelujah." And then uh, the steward said unto himself, "What shall I do?" For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. Uh, I, I cannot dig to beg. I'm ashamed. He says, I am resolved what to do. You, you got to come to a resolve. All right? Your challenge, your stewardship seem to have gone away. Things that is, is not going well. You, you know some things you cannot. He said, I can't dig. I cannot dig. Hallelujah. He said, and then to beg, I can't go begging. I, I'm too ashamed to beg you. You ever get to the point where anything you could muster up in your mind to think, you say, I can't, I, I, I can't do that. I, 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 you throw up your hands and say, I just can't do it. But look, look what the look what the steward did, did. He said, I am resolved what to do. That when I put out, hallelujah, when I put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Verse 5 says, So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? Verse 6 says, And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Verse 7 says, Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take that bill and write four scores. Verse 8 says, and the Lord commended the unjust steward. Why? Because, check out that word, write that word down, whatever you have to, because he had done wisely. He was in the jam. He was messed up. He was, he, he was at odds with the steward. But listen, he, the, 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 the Lord commended the unjust, the uncircle that word, he was unjust, liar, sneaky, cunning, praise be to God. But the Lord commended the unjust to it because he had done wisely. And then it says, underline this, write this down, whatever you need to do, record it. For the children of this world are in their generation hmm, wiser than the children of light. That's a whole nother lesson, praise be to God. We I heard the other day that uh, uh, with the 
millennial group or the new group, whatever, young group or older group or middle-aged group. It is. It changes with whatever uh, century takes place. But they said that the young folks now are saying that they believe in prayer. However, church, no. They don't think the church is necessary. They don't think it's, you know how they do those studies, praise be to God, and they say they don't think it's necessary, they don't think it's important. Well, let me tell you, first of all, the church is you. Jesus is the head, and we are the body. And wherever you are gathered together with other believers, praise be to God, it might not have a cross, it might have a sign of Jesus, you know, how they have them hanging on the wall. No, no, no. Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, he says, I'll be in the midst. He, then he says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as others which have no hope. You know, with this, uh, uh, let, me, let me just check the curve. With this virus that's going on, praise be to God, and all these things that's taking place, people are using this, making that excuse not to fellowship, praise be to God. And I'm not one to tell you either you do or you don't. You need to be persuaded. Let each man be persuaded in his own mind. And when it says that, don't leave out the gospel. Don't leave out what God says. He's your help. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. Praise be all of those things he promised to be for you. But you still have to make a decision of who you will serve. And, and the generational uh, curse that has come upon one generation after generation after generation has to be broken. And how do you break that curse? By understanding what Jesus Christ has already done. You're not breaking a curse. You're pleading the blood of Jesus over it. You're giving God thanks for his blood. He says, praise be to God, the world in their generation, wiser than the children of light. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Listen, look what he says in verse 9. He says, I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. That when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He who is faithful in that which is least, that which is least is faithful in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So you had a faithful who's unjust. He said, if you be faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many. So he that's faithful in, 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 in that which is least is faithful also in much. But watch this. He that is unjust in the least is also unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in righteousness, if, therefore, you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you, your trust, the true riches? You're not even faithful over praying, reading, studying. You're not faithful over the things that uh, you are called to be stewards over. It might be a small thing that you might consider is really not important, but it might be important to something else. Somebody else, it might be the stepping stone to get you to a, a, a more prestigious life, a job, or, or, or family. But you won't even be, be faithful over the small manner, the, the things. Who's going to trust to you, praise be to God, a, a, a bigger responsibility? People are struggling and fighting and upset about not being promoted and not being moved on. You know, we've all been there. You know, what we think we, in, in football, I thought I should have been starting as a freshman. I worked out and did all those things and so forth and so on. But it wasn't until I began to be really faithful over the exercise, over my assignments, over what I need to do, that I begin to move to the next level. We, we don't, we're not even faithful over uh, the small pieces. We won't pray. We won't study. We won't fellowship. All of those things are, are very important. Hallelujah. If you're going to operate in the peace and the victory of God. And if God is going to call, call you to be a steward over his word, praise be to God, you got to spend time with him through the power of the Holy Spirit. And verse 12 says, and if you love not, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? 
No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else she will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and men. What? Who, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Who are you serving? Your job? Your family? Put God first. He'll hit the other things will come into play. They will begin to happen. They will begin to fall in the right place that it should be. Right now, you're out of order. You're out of order. And God can't bless a mass. You can't serve two men. It says, and the Pharisees also who were uh, covetous heard all these things, and they deride him. Verse 15 says, and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourself before men, but God knoweth your heart. Circle that, God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. All those things that you think is, are important, your position, what you have, what you possess, all this temporal stuff, all of these, th these uh, nuances and different things that you count as precious, for that which is highly esteemed among men is what? An abomination in the sight of God. It said the law and the prophets were until John. But since that time, watch this, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. Huh? And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass. Watch this. Then one tittle of the law to fail. Boy, you better understand what God is trying to tell you about his word. God's word never will fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will never fail. Some of you have walked away. Some of you have given up. I don't know why. Were you hurt in church? I don't know why. Did you just drop out? I don't know why. Did you begin to be deceived what it is? Uh, about uh, who God is and what God has done. And now you're relaxing. Now you say, I don't have to, like the, like the report I heard, we, we believe in prayer, we, but we don't believe in church. We don't believe in that churchy stuff. What is the churchy stuff? You're the church. Praise be to God. And you're called to carry the message, the goodness of Jesus Christ. Some of you have given up and quit because of this virus. It's, been, it's like a door open for you not to get in fellowship, not to connect, not to, to, to get back into the Word. You watch a little bit on TV, you might look at the, you know, uh, social media, but there's no connection between you and the brethren. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to come together. We cannot forsake that because with two or more gathered in his name, he says, I'll be in the midst. It says, whosoever putteth a, 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 a away his wife and marries another committeth adultery. Whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. There was a rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. This, all that which I just read to you, I, re I'm reading, I read that because I want you to see what happens uh, in the sequences, praise be to God. All the things that I just read, it says in verse 20, uh, there was uh, a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now think about what we just read, praise be to God. Just think about it. It says, and it is easy, in verse 17, for heaven and earth to pass and one tittle of the law to fail. Who? So ever putteth away his wife and, and, or his, uh, 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 and marries another committed adultery, and whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband committed adultery. And then it goes on to say to give the the parable, the, the the story rather of the the rich man. It says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table more. Over the dogs came and licked his sores. He was in such bad shape that that the, that, that the dogs came and licked his, his his sores. He says he had a desire to be fed with. He he was willing to have or be fed from the slop, from the crumbs 
of the table of the rich man. I'll read it again. And desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man. You know that, that you can, and people have fallen in such a writ, such a challenge, such a hole in their lives that they're willing to settle and accept the lowest form of material or food where they might have uh, dined off a great cuisine and, and drank of the best of substance, but now they find themselves broke. They found themselves, hallelujah, uh, in a poverty state. Now just think about that in terms of spiritually. One, one falling that far from uh, prosperity to now poverty. There's people I know who's had the, 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 the riches of this land. Now they're struggling to make it. They're, they're on the street. They're, they're homeless. They, they, they're not used to it. But, but for survival's sake, praise be to God. Hallelujah. But, but for to go on living, they would receive anything that will cause them to operate one more day. Listen to this. And desire to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. And moreover, he had dogs came and licked his sword. So not only was he hungry, he, he had ailments in his body. He had sores over his body. Praise be to God. He couldn't get the health care, so to speak, if you know what I mean. He couldn't go into the doctor with his Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever you use now. They have so many different policies that you can get. And now you find yourself without dental care. <laughs> Shout out my son. You find yourself without, praise be to God, the necessities of things that you normally would take for granted as you go to work and you get and you put in your hours. And now if there's a scratch, you could go and get back. No, he didn't have that life. He said the dogs, he, it was so, he had gotten so low that the dogs licked his sores and, 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 and he ate crumbs from the uh, rich man's table. Look at verse 20. And it came to pass that the beggar died. This is the thing we talked about last week. And I want to tell you, all of us, whatever you look like, black, white, rich, poor, whatever, we all have one thing in common. For sure, that we're going to die. Hallelujah. In other words, we're going to leave this earth. But the Bible says if this earthly house, if this tabernacle was dissolved, we have another building, a house not made with hands, a house eternal in the heavens. But there is another place. There is another way that's not God's way. Watch this. The beggar died. We all have to stand before God. We all are going to die. Yes, you're going to die. I'm going to die. When? We don't know, but be ready. Be ready when he comes. Was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Look how God comforts the, the poor man, the beggar, begging for food, sores over his body. Praise be to God. The angels, hallelujah, carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died. Circle that. And was buried. We talked about this last week. But I want you to go back over it again. He was also buried. Hallelujah. One was done, one died. The beggar died, was carried to angels. But the rich man also died and was buried. Huh? And in hell, he lifted his eyes. Being in torment, not going to be in torment or not something that was temporal. Being, that was his being from now on, to be in torment. And she is Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So we said last week that he was able to see. See, you forget this message from last week. You're already on your way back to normal. Don't go back to normal. Don't do it. Don't go back to normal, praise be to God. He said Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom so he could see. So he's conscious, praise be to God. And he cries, he can talk and said, 
Father Abraham, have mercy on me. So write this down. He can see, hallelujah. He can talk, praise be to God, hallelujah. He, he, he lifted up his eyes, hallelujah. He was in torment. He could feel, he could feel. Think about it, think about it. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. He, he, he didn't have mercy on the poor man, on the beggar, praise be to God. But he says, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. He's so conscious, hallelujah, of his state. But even then he wanted the beggar, the poor man. He wanted to be served. He, he said, what, what he thought, he was in so much turmoil, what he thought would bring relief. First of all, it couldn't be done. And number two, if it could, it wouldn't bring any solace to him. Tip of his tongue and cool my tongue, finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in tormented, for I am tormented in, hallelujah, this flame. This was written, and Jesus is telling us, praise be to God, what hell is like, and he wants us to avoid it. And Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now, somebody say, but now, he is comforted, and thou art tormented. I want to read all the way to then. And besides this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that I may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Now, I read this over again because I want you to just hear that whatever is going on with you and your family, get it right. I've been talking to my brothers and we've been talking to my nephews and we've just been calling some, some, you know, right on uh, wanting to hear, but there's some that have not responded. There's some who's just don't want to hear it. Maybe, I don't know, uh, but you're going to find that when you go out and you begin to make that change, one of the things that people like to look at is what you were, who you were, how close you are to sin of familiarity, a lot of time will block, praise be to God, them from receiving from God. Don't be discouraged as you go talk to family members, as you go talk to your brothers and your sisters and your nieces and your nephews and your cousins and your uncles and your aunts. He went to his family. He said, I have five brothers, hallelujah, that he may testify, send them, lest they come to this place of torment, praise be. We don't want to wait. We want to let people know. We want to want people know that there's, hallelujah, heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And the closest ones to us often will not hear from us. The sin of familiarity, even in your churches, pastors and members and congregants, they're so familiar that they, they can't make a separation between the natural and the supernatural. 